So I think I'm about four naps shy of fully recovering from Balticon 57, but I'm home and back at work. Welcome back to Morgan's Writing Tips and Writerly Musings with writing tips from the pros and, of course, my own writerly musings. I'm your host, Morgan Hazelwood, and today I'm here with my Balticon 57 recap. Now, last weekend, I spent shopping for all the supplies I was going to need, not only for the convention, but because I decided I needed to throw a room party. The party scene was a little sad last year, although I know a lot of that was hesitation about having food, etc., and unmasking as we exited the acute stage of the pandemic. Uh, so my preparations continued Wednesday evening. I printed out the handouts for my workshop and my parties, packed, and of course worked on my blog and video posts for last week. Thursday, I woke up, finished packing, then reviewed the schedule to see what sort of things I should be promoting. I managed to schedule posts for our featured scientists, plus finished coordinating the memorial for our ghost of honor, Daphne Arthur. Uh, our photographer slash my friend Sako arrived a little after 1 p.m. and I was only halfway through with packing my car. By the time I got everything into the car, there was hardly any space left for her stuff. So we shifted things around and gave up on having any visibility whatsoever out of the back of the car. Uh, since we'd packed my hatchback to the roof, um, and slid a few bags by her feet. We even had room to throw in a few balloons that I'd rescued from a work event uh, because my back view wasn't going to get any better. We hit a fair amount of traffic on the way up. I'd planned to get there early to help offload the con truck, but because the convention truck got there on the early side of the three-hour arrival window, by the time we got to the hotel and got settled, they didn't need any help. We did go find a porter because I knew there was no way we could handle as much stuff as the car held by ourselves, at least not in like three trips. Um, he was certain he was going to fit everything onto one cart with one trip, even after we opened up the trunk. Then I slowly removed more and more and more from the back seat. At some point, the porter had to concede that my luggage would be taking two trips. Uh, after we unloaded, I got my badge and checked in with the rest of the publicity committee, seeing what was needed and what was left to do. I unpacked all my stuff and settled in for the long weekend. I had made plans to have dinner with my friend Jenny and some of her friends. Sako was going to join us, but she wasn't up to walking the full way and coordination for a ride just got tricky. I walked there with Happy and the rest drove over. While the food at the Ethiopian place was delicious, we were the only table upstairs and the service forgot about us a few times. It was pushing 10 p.m. by the time we made it back to the hotel. So Friday, Friday morning, despite my fatigue, uh, my to-do list crowded into my head and I was up by 7 a.m. With registration not scheduled to open until 1 p.m., I decided to see how many social media posts I could get scheduled. I wanted featured items on the Twitter and the Instagram and the Facebook for both me and the convention. I'm not sure how, but I managed to take five hours to do this. Regularly checking the social media platforms and responding to comments and questions as they came in probably slowed my progress. If a question was asked, I answered it both on the thread and made its own post, like, how do I access the virtual side of the convention, and that sort of thing. After tracking down lunch with Sako, I delivered the balloons to the fan table, hung all of my party signs, dropped off my supplies for the quiet room, and tracked down some glue because my phone was threatening to fall out of my case. Luckily, Team Medical Dragon had my back. I only had one panel on Friday afternoon, so this is your first Balticon, where I get to talk about some of the mini activities and events we had planned. I joined this year's con chair, Kelly Pierce, uh, vice chair, Sam Lubell, and the discussion was moderated by Perianne Lurie. 
as I wandered the halls before my next event, Sam asked me where the Compton Crook certificate was. Well, we had some old drafts but hadn't printed anything yet, so I rushed to my room, updated their certificate, checked for typos with Megan, a registration, another publicity committee staffer, snagged the fancy paper from the masquerade table, and got it printed out with tens of minutes to spare. Next up were the opening ceremonies, where said award was being presented. Uh, where I spent an hour at the Baltimore Science Fiction Society's fan table right outside the door. I saw some cute cosplay and several people signed up and or expressed interest in becoming members, so success. Once freed from the table, I happily accepted my friend Doc's invitation to join him, his friend Paul, and their family for dinner. It took over an hour to show up, but was quite tasty and good company. After dinner, I checked out several room parties and chatted with people, some old friends, some new friends. At about 1.30 in the morning, my friend Marcia kept me company as I assembled two platters of ham biscuits and turkey biscuits in preparation for a first-timers and friends meet and greet and tour the next morning. Well, later that morning. And by biscuits, I mean Hawaiian sweet rolls. I don't regret my choices. Then sleep. Next, Saturday. I was up by 8 a.m. to shower and get dressed up. I spent Saturday dressed as the Mushroom Queen and had a lot of fun with my brand new costume. And by costume, I mean closet cosplay because it was not elaborate and all purchased items. I introduced myself to our fan guest of honor, Bells Jordan, and let him know that I was the co-host for the morning event. I sorted out the tables and set up the food and the snacks for the event. We ended up sitting in a circle, so I think next time I'll just go ahead and set that up. Um, so after some chatting and about a half hour of mingling and eating sandwich biscuits, I took half the group on the tour. I slowly shed people as they figured out where they were going and what they wanted to do, but those who made it all the way through the tour got a free temporary tattoo <laughs> from the sales table. When I went to clean up the event, the biscuits didn't quite make it to the con suite table before people snagged the last one. Definitely the right choice for a, an 11.30 a.m. event. I thought I had a few minutes to check out the art show when I ran to my friend Greg and his wife. Uh, he asked what my next event was, and when I went to check my schedule, I realized I had laid down my phone at some point. Retracing my steps, I found it on the table in the con suite where I'd applied my said temporary tattoo. Clearly, I cannot handle having more than one accessory. I believe having a mug decorated with mushrooms to coordinate with my costume was why I managed to lose my phone. I just, two hands, it, it's hard. After darting back to my room to pick up supplies and start the meatballs for that night's party, I headed back into the fray. Next up was my first Balticon workshop that I'd ever thrown, beta reading for fun and no profit on the team track. I think it needs a new name next year because I don't know that all teens and younger really know what the term beta reading means. I had two people show up. The When the first one realized it was, he was the only one at an interactive event and it was aimed at teens, and his writing was more adult, he opted to head for uh, Sarah Pensker's concert. Few other people showed up because the map for the club lounge had overlain itself on the map for the seventh floor until Ops made a sign to redirect people to the 12th floor. But I did end up with one very lovely lady who stayed for my entire entire presentation. It went really well, and we had a great one-on-one -on -one discussion about beta reading techniques for both sides of the pit, with my attendees taking lots of notes. So I loaned an HDMI cable uh, to the next presenter and headed back to the room. That's where I found my phone was blowing up, asking where I was because my virtual panel was about to start. I had no clue what they were talking about, but the Zoom host sent me a screenshot of me listed on the schedule, and I managed to log in before the other panelists had finished their introductions. 
My surprise panel was handling the controversial in SF slash fantasy. The other panelists were Robert L. Slater, Adam Staffan, October Santarelli, and William Joseph Roberts, moderated by A.D. Bunny Orman. The other panelists seemed to think my contributions were worthwhile. I think each of them had a transition of building off what Morgan said. Plus, I made friends with at least one of the other panelists. I had a little time after that, so I swung by Program Ops to figure out what had happened. Looking at the schedule on my phone, my page had last been updated 30 minutes before the panel, and I was not displayed as a panelist then, but I was definitely a panelist now. We determined programming ops had been trying to message me and had inadvertently added me to the panel instead. Despite my brief prep window, I was very pleased that I'd managed to hit the ground running so well. So next up was the broad universe rapid fire readings with Randy Don, Roberta Rogal, Christian Knight, and TH Timko. I really enjoyed their stories. As always, though, I started to second guess my reading when I read it aloud. It seemed to go over well, but I'm worried my story starts off a little slow. After that, in the same room was the youth open mic. No one showed up. So I caught up on the social media comments on my personal and the Balticon accounts and recorded a TikTok. Back in my room, it was time to set up for the party. And that's when I learned I'd left the power cable for the rice cooker at home. Did you know that new rice cookers have power cables that detach? I didn't. So after checking with many people and many places where I found the right shape cable, but with three prongs and not two prongs, I stole slash borrowed a crock pot from the con suite and set it up to cook rice, but it was going to take a while. The meatballs went over great at my Morgan's Chillaxathon party, but it was not very chill for the best possible reason. It was super packed and popular. I'd never thrown a con party before. There was so much alcohol left over, though. I don't know that people realize they should get into the coolers for the beer and cider. I will definitely be throwing my party again, but maybe bringing less beer. The apple pie moonshine, however, went over very well. Of course, the rice was not the best because I'd never made it in a crock pot before and that's not the right tool for the job and it finished stupidly late. After the party wrapped at 2 a.m., I had to get the borrowed crock pot cleaned out and returned to the con suite because there was no way I was going to be able to drop it off in the morning before my first panel. Which brings us to Sunday. Sunday started off far too early, but I made it on time to my 10 a.m. panel. Picking Your Plot was moderated by the always amazing Aaron Roth, who inspires me to be a better moderator, along with T.C. Weber and Alan Smelt where I feel like Alan and I were definitely coming from a similar approach to writing. I went looking for lunch next with Sako and Aaron, and after finding a line at the Cheesecake Factory, a diner slash pub that stopped serving food at noon on a Sunday, we ended up at the Halal Guys. The place had limited seating, so we brought our food back to the better air-conditioned hotel lobby, and it was delicious. Next up was my planned virtual panel, Am I a Real Writer Now?, where we defined writer with a lowercase and an uppercase W and the word author. I got that beautiful external validation from the other panelists who assured me that not only was I a writer with a lowercase W, but also an uppercase W because I'm putting my work out there, although I might not be an author yet. I can't pay a bill with the money I make. So I also, during that panel, made myself cry a little talking about the dream. The dream of having someone I don't know who isn't a friend of a friend come up to me and tell me that my story meant something to them someday. After that was my better beta reading panel, as opposed to my earlier workshop where I was the moderator. 
I tried to follow in Aaron's footsteps and let the panelists do most of the talking, although I definitely interjected here and there. I felt I managed a much better balance than when I moderated a similar panel at RavenCon last month. By then, it was Sunday, it was afternoon, and that meant it was time for my weekly lazy Sunday afternoon productivity stream. Doc and Saku were with me, and people joined us this year. I was super excited, and it was lovely to have them. Online regular Desdemona joined us in person, as well as several other attendees. Plus, of course, all the online regulars. It was great to see y'all. Uh, while packing, I spotted a thank you note next to my HDMI cable thing, or I would have completely forgotten it, and I need it for work. I'd intended, based on all of my leftovers from the night before, to host a Ghost of the Chillaxathon that night, but then I ran into her con chair. She was hosting a birthday party for Bells, and her co-host, who had promised to arrange all the food, got sick last minute, leaving her with nothing. So I donated my supplies to her. The thought was, now I could go to bed whenever I wanted. <laughs> yeah, that, that didn't work out. The roommate and I and Doc ordered Chinese. I took a lovely harbor side walk to pick up our food and we ate in the room. The rest of the night I spent party hopping, including a short stint in the filk room during their Songs of Hope set. About 1.30, I wandered down to Ops to await the film festival, Goat's Tally. The Ops crowd is always super fun to hang out with. And we finally got the results in a little after three. Monday, we had no scheduled panels and I'd been up super late the night before, so I contemplated sleeping in. But I also hadn't had a chance to attend much of anything and John Scalvey was our special guest having won the Highland Award. Plus I had my mom's copy of Old Man's War I borrowed from her in the early pandemic which I'd offered to get signed. So I dragged my butt out of bed and made it there in time to get a good seat. He was a great reader and graciously signed the book for me. I was a bit disappointed that I had managed to miss the entire art show because of timing, so I made sure to fit in a circuit through the dealer's room and the artist alley. I got one art print and some change so I could tip the hotel cleaning staff, and after signing my volunteers' hours sheet and snagging a sandwich from the con suite delivery, I headed back to my room to pack. I thought I had plenty of time, but when the porter arrived, we were 10 minutes away from the start of the improving Balticon panel, so I handed off my car keys and abandoned Sako to load the car so I could hurry down. While I wasn't technically on that panel, I thought I needed to be there. And I ended up bringing the microphone to people and repeating the comments and concerns after our tech Robert relayed them from the stream. As improving Balticon panels go, it wasn't bad at all because they can get quite heated. There were several things that were already on our list, only a few things we hadn't been aware of, and a few very helpful suggestions. The panel definitely ran long though. I would be microphone woman again if asked. The tech crew wasn't quite ready for teardown, so I swung through program ops to chat with people and Rory, our con chair's daughter, helped me record a video of counting all of the con chair's found marbles. It was a bit our con chair Kelly had mentioned during opening ceremonies because one must have lost their marbles to agree to be con chair um, at Balticon more than once. People had been returning marbles to her all weekend. Out of the original 57, she ended up with exactly 42, which sounds like a joke, but isn't. Sako and I wanted to grab food next, and my friend Abdul Hadi said something about heading off to Fa with the team Medical Dragon, and they graciously let us invite ourselves. It was delicious but 40 minutes in the wrong direction, 20 minutes each way. Um, by the time we made it back, most of Teardown had happened and we were starting to fade. So instead of sticking around for Dead Dog, the after party, we headed home. 
traffic was much kinder on the way home, and a certain kitty managed to slip out the garage door when I got home. Maybe I'll finish unpacking tonight. I hope you had a lovely Memorial Day weekend, and maybe if you were at Balticon, I hope you had a great time. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.